Hi, I'm here again. So today's topic is going to be interesting because it's something I've been asked regularly, but I've never really had the time to accumulate all my thoughts. So this is an attempt on putting together all I think and hoping it's going to be beneficial to you. I still disagree with the entire idea of we have like an industry, you get, but I would like to say um, we have an ecosystem. We can have that conversation on the comments below and you could tell me that, okay, Nollywood's an industry and then I'll tell you why I think it's an ecosystem, you get. And why that is great, um, today's topic will be for cinematographers or aspiring cinematographers, those of you who want to ascend to become cinematographers, right? And this is accumulation of some of the things that I have um, taken note of on my journey to where I am. Because for me, it's still an ongoing process. There's a lot of failing, learning, and learning that I still need to do because things keep changing. People change, deliverables change. And also, it's a growing conversation because it's the standards and everything that's involved, it just keeps going higher and higher. And you have to like push yourself or you become stagnant and you become outdated. And before you know it, it's all Asian history. So let's dive into it. Um, the first thing that comes to mind would be research. Rather than descend down the rabbit hole from interest, which is also great because you, it's, it almost feels like blind fate, right? I would prefer researching. Like, not the height of what that career could be, not the breadth, not everything in the intakes, the sacrifices you would make, and be fully aware of what it demands of you. So before you get on the journey, you, do, you don't just actually come from the place of zeal and passion, which could take you very far, but it's not all that you require to actually go the mile. And the next thing that will be on my list that I have here is you have to test those theories. So for example, if your mind tells you that um, I have to learn how to shoot a music video or make this kind of work and before you know I would be working with this person or like you figure out the strategy, you have to put the strategies to test. Because the, like I said, uh, where rubber meets the road, that's when the truth of every experience is revealed. And you find out that there's a lot more you could take, or maybe you are at the factor you've been waiting for. You can't just leave it locked up in your head and say, mentally it works, because whatever translates in your brain usually doesn't translate in life, because people are weird, people are messed up, people are different, people are great, people are good, people are kind, but you do not know what puddle or pool you would actually meet when you actually, which means you have to test every theory, go back to your drawing board, re-strategize and actually come at it again from a different angle. I'll call it mentorship, but what I usually speak to is because um, technically, people usually get this thing wrong, all right? My perspective, the foundation of a mentor is a shortcut to your destination, literally. So when somebody agrees, which is why I usually turn down mentorship, and I'll tell you why. When somebody agrees to become your mentor, they are surrendering to become your sacrificial lamb, giving you their access, their resources, their experience, everything they've accumulated in, let's say, 200 years. Or, you know, 200 years. We don't live more than 70, 80 nowadays, so sorry, I take that back. <laughs> say 10, 15 years, right? And they pack it down to you in probably one week, two days, one month, and you're up and running. Because one, they can vouch for you. They can guide you. They can give you their resources to actually get you to become the powerhouse. So necessarily, what, what literally happens is that they make a younger versions of themselves with the same intensity, knowledge, and propensity, right? Just in a very short time. And that's like a big ax to ax of someone, you get. So, and even if you agree, you can't replicate it across hundreds of people because it's, it's quite difficult, it's quite intimate, especially when you're giving out like contacts. For example, you have like a producing friend, you're like, oh yes, I think this person will be good for you. Um, you have, most of those opportunities are not that plenty to be able to say you can have 200 mentees. And if you truly say you have 200 mentees, the chances that you are true to those 200 personnel would not be the truth of the case. Because in real life scenarios, there's no way you can offer all 200 the access, the opportunities, maybe you can offer them your resources and experience, but not in all complete totality. Which is why it's a very tricky conversation when I get, oh, I want you to be a mentor. I'm like, I, 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 see, I'm even lost for words. Because I don't even think I have the capability to even serve or function to that calling at the level that I know what it truly requires. So it's almost like, um, like I read somewhere on Instagram, you have to figure out who's worth the oil. So you don't have to go waste your oil on people that are not worth it. You get. So 
If that doesn't work for you because you meet people who turn you down and disagree not to become your mentors, that's okay and fine. But generally, it leads me to my second um, question, which means you have to do the work you crave. Because the reason why you're reaching out to these mentors is because they do things that resonate with you, which is why you want to actually be plugged into the entire system that they represent. If that's no longer working for you, then you have to become your own instigator. And it's quite a long path, but it will still take you to your destination. You have to do the work you crave. Avoid the rave of the moment. For example, do what's true to you, not what's it's in demand at the moment because what's in demand at the moment will constantly change but what's true to you it would attract your crowd attract the people who want the experience that only you can deliver that's not available on the market that's not available from a lot pack shop or from some software or from some plugin things that is only specific that only you as that cinematographer or that image creator can actually create you have to seek out partnerships and don't be shy to put yourself out there what that speaks to is that, you know the popular saying, a tree can make a forest, right? It's very true. When you move as a tribe, it's a lot more easy to combine everybody's 10% to come to 100% than when you're moving alone. It is not impossible to move alone if that's what you're, the card fate or the world has dealt you, but it's just going to take a longer process than if you're leveraging on people, resources, and networking. Become a value house. I mean, value to the craft as in terms of due diligence, um, being able to like coordinate things, being able to translate things that are said verbally into documents that will be useful to the production, being able to uh, um, learn how to prepare a page, learn how to drop a lighting diagram, learn how to be able to put technical things on paper when you're actually distributing production. All those things that could be um, of extreme supportive value to your mentor that you're trying to get to become your mentor or to the person or the place that you're trying to actually function you get or like like look for the, what's missing the missing gap that they have and actually become um, the final completion screw in that chain that actually fills up that hole that plugs in and actually projects value now this leads me up to my very next interesting point which says pick up the good habits and leave the bad so sometimes you get yourself stuck in with a mentee who has Certain habits you appreciate and certain habits you do not appreciate because we're all work in progress. Nobody has it all figured out and none of us are actually perfect, you get. As a mentor, there's a tendency to copy that this is what he did that brought him here. So it's also comfortable to also stay in that state and pick up those wrong characters. No. The best thing that will set you up for success will probably rise above what your mentor is, is to pick up all that's great about him and leave all that sucks about him in the past. So you become the version 2.0 or 3.0. And if that were supposed to continue for generations after generations, you can see how perfection would get even more closer because all the good characteristics that you that are amazing about that person is what you instill. And all the bad, you do not, you do not take. You just leave that behind and fill up that gap with more um, balance, etiquette, and common sense. Find yourself low-level productions where you can gain experience from. Because apart from all this research, you need to put in the man hours. There's nothing as the there's nothing like the joy of doing. You get. You could read all, you could say all, you could forecast it, put it down, present it, make all the technical plans, be your intellectual sound, but there's nothing like the joy of doing. There's nothing like dealing with the reality of you have just two hours to shoot, the sun will soon go down, and you need to can about two more things. About making those pressure decisions. Because filmmaking is never about um, having the right situation where something does not go wrong. Even when you have all the million budget, something will still go wrong. It could be that, oh, um, for example, something broke down on set, that's why you had everything on ground and you have to do without your initial plan. So it's always about what can you deliver when things go wrong? Because definitely something always go wrong on set. If you doubt me... I like to tell students that um, I talk to that you know, it's not a matter of how well can you make a movie. It's how well can you make it under the circumstances. Because there's always circumstances. And you cannot use that as an excuse. You can't put a, a title card at the head of the movie and say, well, we had a really pro bad problem. You know, this, the actor got sick and it rained this day and we had a hurricane. And, you know, you can't, the cameras broke down. You can't do that. You simply have to show them the movie. And it's got to work. It's way more intense and in a cool way there's a book that says the obstacle in the way i'm not trying to 
plug the book, but it generally speaks to the idea of the difficult part is usually the most rewarding. This will bring you to the next skill that says naturally building your skill set. Because of this whole pressure situation, being able to think, think articulatively, being able to respond in chaos, um, managing all the things that's required within the space of all that's erupting at the moment, all these things will lead you to be able to build character, building a skill set, having the ability to keep a cool head when things are going wrong. Um, learning how to checkmate yourself around people because it's a people's business as much as you great with all the f-stop numbers people will just just want to be with great people they do not want to be with people that actually make them feel bad about themselves build a portfolio build a body of work something that speaks true to what you create which ties into my earlier point that says um, you have to create the experience you crave which is what's going to attract the type of clients or the type of people that gravitates to your work. There's always somebody for everybody out there. So never feel pressure to say, that's how they've been doing it, that's how you want to do it. In your own craziness, you can find a new way of doing it. In your own craziness, you could come up with, it may not be that popular, but it speaks true to you. Because among everything, you want to live with the satisfaction that you left everything on the table. You did all that there is that was possible and it actually speaks to what you, what's true to you. The reason why we have people like David Fincher, Wes Anderson, they have all this stylized work that we can recognize is because at the heart of all these decisions they make, they make things that are actually true to them, things that actually speaks and resonates with them. And that's all I have for you for this week's episode. So I hope you're great. Until next time I see you, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Thank you.